folks, Chaplain Scott here with our inaugural questions on the run. In these video updates, I hope to be able to answer the many questions that you guys are hurling my way. I am excited about the interest in the book of Revelation that our study is generating. Many of you have told me personally that you have been reading ahead. Some of you have read the whole book and you've come up with questions here and there, and not necessarily questions about the week in which we might be presently in, but something that is yet future to our study, but if you'll give me your questions, I will still try to answer them. I have a few questions here that uh, several folks have sent to me over the past several days and got a couple in this morning, but one question, a gentleman asked, where is the rapture in Revelation? The rapture, of course, is that event in Scripture that describes when Jesus returns for his bride. His bride, of course, is the church, and you and I, as members of the church, as part of the body of believers, the body of Christ, we are his bride. And so one of these days, the Bible says, he's coming back for his bride. Now, I believe, and I make no secret about this, I believe in a pre-millennial, pre-tribulation rapture of the church. That means, I believe, that the tribulation will take place prior to a literal 1,000-year reign of Christ on this earth, and I believe that the church will be removed from this earth prior to the seven-year great tribulation, which is also known as Daniel's 70th week. So, the question is, where is the rapture in Revelation? Well, the rapture is not directly mentioned in Revelation, but I do believe that it is certainly inspired between chapters 3 and chapters 4. You'll recall that chapters 2 and 3 describes the church age. That's where we are now, but chapter 4 begins a division uh, in the book from the church age to things yet future. And He says in chapter 4, verse 1, after these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne. Now John is a representative of the church, and John is now no longer on earth, but he is now in heaven. Uh, after chapter 3 and chapter 4, he goes from earth to heaven. This is some language that we find elsewhere uh, in the book of First Thessalonians, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonian believers, where he talks about the process of the rapture. In John chapter 14, we have the promise of the rapture, that is, that Jesus Christ is going to return for his bride. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul gives us the purpose of the rapture, and that speaks to the resurrection of believers and the transformation of believers who are still alive when Jesus comes. But in chapter 4 of Revelation, Paul gives us that the process, that is how it is going to take place. And he says, beginning in verse 13, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. Fallen asleep is a euphemism for death. These are believers who have died. Verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, listen to this, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall always be with the Lord. And then verse 18, he says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. So if you go back to... Revelation chapter 4, remember chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation are the church age. That's where we are presently, in the church age. But in chapter 4, verse 1 and following, 
Uh, the church age is over. In chapters 4 and 5 of Revelation, the church is in heaven. And he says in verse 1, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me, said, Come up here. So uh, that voice was like the sound of a trumpet. And John says the voice told him to come up here. So I don't believe that's a direct revelation. I'm sorry, a direct uh, mention of the rapture there in Revelation chapter 4, but it is certainly an indirect reference to it, I believe. And if nothing else, the rapture occurs in the white space between chapters 3 and 4. So, good question. Another question. I came across Revelation chapter 10 verse 4 where John is instructed by the voice from heaven to seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. What do you think the whole mystery was about by keeping those things hidden? So let's go look at the text real quick. Uh, chapter 10, verse 4. Actually, we'll start in verse 3. And he cried out with a loud voice as when a lion roars. And when he had cried out, the seven peals of thunder uttered their voices. Verse 4, when the seven peals of thunder had spoken, I was about to write, this is John talking obviously, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up the things which the seven peals of thunders have spoken, and do not write them down. So he is instructed, do not write down what the seven peals of thunder said. Skip down to verse 7, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished as he preached to his servant, the prophet. So, going back to the gentleman's question, what do you think the whole mystery was about by keeping those things hidden? So, I've got my cheat notes with me, uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything in my answer here. Uh, first of all, I have no special revelation about what the seven thunders uttered or what the seven thunders are, for that matter, other than uh, what they might be, and we'll look at that in just a few moments. Chapter 10 is one of the interludes uh, in Revelation. Uh, things are taking place in the flow of Revelation, uh, some heavy things, if you ask me, and uh, there are a few interludes in the book, uh, which is almost like God was giving uh, a few moments of rest to John because he's taking all this in and he's writing it down and so we have one of those interludes here in chapter 10 that is between the sixth and seventh trumpets uh, regarding the seven thunders and what they uttered they are sealed up and kept secret uh, but these seven uh, thunders may tie back to Psalm 29 verses 3 through 9 where the God of glory thunders. And there's a sevenfold description there regarding God's voice. So let's just look back uh, at the uh, Psalms there. Psalm 29 and uh, verse 3. Now, we could begin in verse 1 where David writes, Ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty, ascribe to the Lord, Glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord, glory due his name. Worship the Lord in holy array. And then he begins to describe the voice of God, and he gives a sevenfold description. Uh, and one of, the, uh, one of the things he says is that the voice of God, the God of glory, thunders. Verse 3, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to calve and strips the forest bare. And his temple, and in his temple, everything says glory. So, really, a moment of worship there on the part of King David, and he describes for us there the sevenfold 
description of God's voice. So that might be what's being alluded to here in Revelation chapter 10 when he speaks of the seven peals of thunder who uttered their voices. But the Bible doesn't tell us what they said. John was told not to write it down. They could be more judgments, but that is pure speculation on my part. Uh, but one thing we can say is that God clearly doesn't want us to know at this point, and we may never know, because some things are reserved for the mind of God. Some things you and I will never be privy to. But, taken with verse 7, where he says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, as he preached to his servants the prophets. So taken with this verse, it could be truth about God himself, which will not be revealed until the end of the great tribulation, and his kingdom is established on this earth. So uh, that's about all I got on the seven thunders. I uh, wished I could give you more, but to give you more, I'd have to be a prophet under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and I am certainly not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, and I don't believe God's going to be inspiring any more uh, additions to his uh, completed work that we refer to as the Bible. So good question. Another question that came up this morning in our D-Life group, uh, where we were in Revelation chapter 12, so uh, getting a, another sneak peek into what's coming, uh, but Someone asked, who is the woman and male child in Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5? And so in Revelation chapter 12, uh, the Bible says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And she was with child, and she cried out, being in labor and in pain, to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems, and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up to God and to his throne. So here in Revelation chapter 12, uh, we have the woman and the male child. And I have heard various explanations as to who John is writing about here. A uh, friend of mine from the Air Force who was a uh, from a Roman Catholic background said that this chapter was referring to the church. Well, one thing I can say for certainty, it's not referring to the church in the first few verses. Uh, in fact, it's not referring to the church at all because after chapter three of Revelation, the church is not mentioned again until the end or near the end of the book. So all the focus at this point is on Israel and the earth dwellers, and the phrase or word earth dwellers uh, is a negative uh, term in Revelation. You do not want to be an earth dweller because an earth dweller, <laughs> getting a little tongue-tied, an earth dweller is always an unbeliever uh, in the book of Revelation. But that being said, the woman here in chapter 12 represents Israel and the male child represents the Lord Jesus Christ, for he came to us through the Jewish people. So the nation of Israel gave us the Messiah, gave us the Lord Jesus Christ, who was, of course, uh, born at, of a virgin uh, as a little baby uh, there in Bethlehem, uh, approximately 2,000 plus years ago. So uh, that's who the woman and the male child are in Revelation chapters, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. And then another question from the same chapter, when does the war in heaven, in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12, take place? Or has it already taken place? So, uh, verse 7, And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war, and they were not strong enough and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. 
and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for his accuser, for the accuser of the brethren has been thrown down, he who accuses them before our God day and night, and they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life even when faced with death. For this reason rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. So war in heaven, Satan and a third of the angels are thrown down to the earth, or Satan is thrown down to the earth, and he takes a third of the angels, in this case they're fallen angels, with him. So some believe that this war in heaven occurred at some time in the past, perhaps uh, during the time that Christ was on the earth and, and when uh, Christ was crucified. Uh, I believe if you uh, pay attention to the context uh, here in Revelation chapter 12 and the book overall, uh, we would have to assume, and I believe it would be a safe assumption, that this war is yet future, that it is something uh, that happens in the end times during that last uh, seven years of human history before Christ establishes his kingdom on this earth. And so what I believe uh, happens here is that this is either right before the midpoint of the tribulation or right at the midpoint of the tribulation. Either either one, uh, where exactly it is, uh, I don't think it's all that important, but that it is somewhere around the midpoint that Satan is kicked out of heaven and thrown down to earth. Now, you may be wondering, does Satan have access to heaven? Well, we can go all the way back to Job chapter 1 in the Old Testament where the Bible says that there was a day when the sons of God, which is a Hebrew expression meaning angel, the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord and Satan came with them. And so uh, the whole story of Job there and uh, that indicates to us that at least then Satan still had access and I believe that he still has access today. Uh, he can come and go. Uh, I don't know what goes on when he comes into the presence of God, uh, but I can assure you of this, God's still in control, and although Satan may be there to accuse the brethren, uh, Jesus Christ has paid the sin, our sin debt in full, and so uh, he cannot be successful in his accusation. But coming back here to chapter 12, the war in heaven uh, is a future war that I believe will take place during the tribulation, probably uh, right around, if not right at the midpoint of the tribulation when the Antichrist desecrates the uh, Jewish temple that will be uh, back rebuilt on the Temple Mount and functioning again. And uh, the Bible says when that happens, Referring back to what Jesus said in Matthew 24, he told his disciples, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, so he points back to Daniel the prophet, he says, run, flee, get out of the city. And uh, that's a whole other discussion, so we'll save that for another time. All right, well, uh, these are all the questions I've gotten here recently. Where is the rapture and revelation? So we answered that. And then... Uh, in chapter 10, verse 4, about the seven thunders and their voices and what they said. And then who is the woman and male child in Revelation chapter 12? And then when does the war in, that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12, take place? So answer those questions today. I look forward to getting more of your questions in the future, and I'll try to answer those as quickly as I can. And uh, we'll see how these video updates go, but if necessary, I'll just write them out and post them to the website. All right. Happy learning and God bless.